competition keeps prices down far more effectively. As long as suffering of sentient beings remain, I will remain in order to serve. I imagined God um, like my grandfather. In conversation today, my guest is one of the great pioneers of contemporary Indian art. His work has a rare quality of explosiveness, of passion, which contrasts with the diminutive, gentle personality of the man. He's a painter, muralist, sculptor, and architect. I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Satish Gujral. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gujral, you've, uh, uh, from the age of eight, you've had this handicap that you have worked with, uh, with your hearing, uh, which has in some ways uh, impacted your work. And recently, you've had surgery uh, to redress this uh, problem to a, a, a great degree. Uh, how has this impacted your work and your life? This is the question uh, you have been asked time and again. Similarly, uh, you have been asking the same question to myself for as many times. Reduced to its basic, it is the same thing as if you are someone who has been sightless or no less then six decades and suddenly seeing as to whom you feel, I cannot say for the sightless, but I certainly can speak for the one who did not have sound for that long time. I think the basic change that the return of sound brings to you is it suddenly makes you feel a part of life. Deafness and absence of sound push you in a world in which you have to invent illusions to assure yourself about your being. Because when you cannot even hear what you say, there is little to assure you the life is real. Of course, everybody invents the world. In the long years that I was in the soundless world, I also invented a world. It, it was real or otherwise. The point ceased to exist as the time passed, I started to live in it. Sometime it became so real for me that I thought the other was our element. In Urdu language, there is a saying, Kufas me rate hi rate, Kufas se ho gai urfat, me khudi no chaleta hu, jo mere so, like the bird, who the lung and caged, start loving the cage itself. So, I begin to love that silence. But if I say I ceased to wish to come back to the hearing world, that would not be true. I always wanted in the heart of my heart. That someday I may be back to where I used to be in my childhood. In those days, I had often heard that silence is golden, that there are sages and poets who long for silence. I could not believe it. Silence, if temporary, 
might might help you to listen to yourself and make you a sage but if enforced permanently it may bring you to a level where you may doubt your own sanity it is you mentioned that you had created this internal world uh, which had excluded sound and when you began to hear sound again did that internal world match what you had created the return of this sound posed its own problems now i had a world which was real but unfamiliar and i had left a world which do not real but had become part of myself still i am happy and it has given me another perspective about life for an artist a change of perspective is always a great gift otherwise you keep seeing things in the same way from the same angle i even before i came back had always longed for change i never remained in a single style a single medium for a long time perhaps it was to break the continuity of silence that i saw change in my creativity to reassure myself that things keep moving and silence does not mean also stillness but when sound came back and the change came i have tried to analyze it i felt that while form is visible thing but what most people who are normal do not notice is that sound effect the image of the form in what ways does sound affect the the image of the, of the form i know sir the same forms which are used to see in silence changing their character you may have noticed when i painted before there was something very definite about where the divide came between one color and another and the form or most stored as if in isolation once the sound came back i found that form spurt rather than being divided melt into each other and so my color sense changed it became smooth and the form itself started to have another character this is a change your uh, earlier work uh, was marked by a certain passion a boldness of strokes and which as you pointed out uh, was because of the, the the demarcation of colors and there was a, a distinct separation between the two and uh, you've suggested that uh, from the time you regain some part of your hearing that there has been a mellowing of fusion of colors and a softening of colors uh, do you feel that there has also been a, a comparative change in your personality that you're now uh, a gentler person than you were before i certainly feel it is coming and it is coming faster than i can explain and i see it every day and i can not find any other reason for this change because i have been painting for more than 5 decades and i know where the change comes this type of change has never occurred before and i can only attribute it to my view of things which no in cloud sound itself what are the your favorite sounds right now i would tell you every sound is welcome for example when it began it was just 
like firecrackers, dum dum, and nothing. Yet I loved it because it was sound. It will take me a long time when I be become choosy like you. Then I will have a lot. No, whenever a door close, a telephone ring, it is as sweet as the sight and sound of the birds chattering. Every moment has become worth living. And first time I understand life is not just to look towards the end. It gives you something every minute and every breath. Were you, when you had, uh, when, you know, you, even in your youth, you had problems with your legs, and then you had this problem with, uh, with, with hearing, were you ever resentful of life or angry with life that to have done this to you? I certainly felt. There was resentment, especially in a society where the lose of any physical power reduces you to a subhuman, makes you subject hmm, of abortion uh, and teasing. And if you are born with it, you may not feel so. But you suddenly see that you are reduced and have got little power to answer back. This was not a small thing. It almost broke me morally. When I look back at it, I do not feel so sorry for myself as I do for my parents. Once I become a parent myself, I came to know it is easy to bear your own suffering, but it is very difficult to bear the suffering of the children. So whenever I look back, I think of my mother, when the silence had befallen, I am shocked to my foundation. A very intimate part of uh, your um discovery of, of, of the world uh, has been the role of your wife uh, who has uh, you know, literally helped you uh, or communicate with the world and has been the bridge between the auditory and, 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 and your understanding of it. Uh, in, in, in what ways has, has, has that impacted your life, your personality? My wife's role cannot be easily explained. In fact, it has not become a rule. It has become my being, a part of it. She has replaced what I physically had lost. I heard through her. Sometimes even saw through her. Hmm? She made the life meaningful for me. And once with her help, I lost that resentment about having lost something, my bitterness was smoothed. My look, the outlook of life changed. I wanted more to live. Do you believe in God? Not in the sense as religions do. To me, it is a feeling of there being a greater morality by which you are judged by, uh, in life. And I try to be obedient to it, but I am not thought of God in the sense as most people do. You've had so much, um, uh, as you've described, uh, suffering in, in, in because of your, your handicap. Uh, do you, have you ever feared death? Not, but I must admit one thing. Before I met my wife, I, rather than being afraid of death, look to it as an end to it all. But after that, 
life became lovable, not death itself. I do not fear death, but I do not want to die. Hmm? All the time, I feel I have so much to do, so much left that I have not said yet. I recall a fan of the line. Mujhe aur zindagi de, kya daastan aduri, meri mouth se na hogi, meri gham ki tarjimani. Eh, but what has consoled me about it? Years back, I developed the feeling as if every day was the last day, and I must finish whatever possible, because there might be no tomorrow. In this sense, has prevailed. Even now, when I work, I think of it, that finish as much as possible, the very day, very now. You've said that you have still a great deal to do, uh, a great deal that you want to finish. Uh, what are some of the things that you still want to achieve in your life? What I want to achieve is a greater excellence to say with greater power, with greater capability, the gift I am given. I have no other interest in life but to express, to be competent in my creativity. I live for it. What is uh, excellence and creativity? Excellence is uh, that you are able to say something or create something to the best of existing ability. This will not, this may or may not be excellence to others, but you can honestly say you did it by as much sincerity as was possible. When I look back to my old work, then I can better judge whether it was excellent or not. But I have never thought that I did not try, and I tried it to the utmost, without fear of world's approval, even when some style or some medium was at its height of approval, I suddenly dropped it, because I thought no more I could do in it, and I had reached a flat level from which there will be only repetition of the same thing. And I have always thought one thing, what I would have been if I had not got this gift of creativity, a handicapped child in a backwater, I might have ended in an institution. Just this gift brought me so much in life. So I want to be honest to it, to the best of my abilities, to nothing else. I do not want to sell it cheap. I do not want to compromise it. So whenever I see that I have not much to give it in the present way, I drop it and find another way to satisfy the hunger of my creativity. When you mention the gift of creativity, uh, to, to what degree uh, for an artist, and, and you work in so many different medium, uh, are, the, are the technical skills uh, important? There is a famous saying, Jo dil ko lagane ka adab jante hain, wo tarikib varikib sab jante hain. When God you gives you a gift of creativity, He also endows you with how to use it. Technicality is part of all mediums. A poet must know the language. The better he knows the language, the more effective he will be. A painter, a sculptor, or architect must know their craft. And you cannot do without it. Sometimes you see, especially in the age of modernity, that just, just uh, drawn 
it it totem or it did a bit is offered as a work of art because modernity has confused us so much but like a wrong language cannot be poetry similarly a work with the craftsmanship cannot achieve the effect it may pass it may win you something that is not important but you cannot be effective without competence in your craft i have experienced that when you have the gift you love the craft as much as you love the expression it is not a hardship it is enjoyment by itself like a singer by singing gets fulfillment not hardship an artist gets the fulfillment just by doing what may be called hard work i have never thought i am a hard worker i am just someone who love to work when does uh, a craft become art there is no monopoly hmm, of creativity in any medium it depends on the amount of sensitivity that you can fuse into an expression that may turn it into an art or just reduce it to a craft can understand as yesterday have come to be recognized as museum piece of today yet not every can understand is a museum piece and not every painting is a museum piece hmm? a craft remains rational you enjoy it it is pleasant beyond it it fail to sink deeper poetry of anything of a painting sculpture building or music has the ability to invoke multiple elements to think in you to charge your inner powers so that you can use them for a better purpose but the craft cannot sink you can just enjoy it like a sweet you eat but it may not give you any energy only made to your castrol <laughs> when you produce a, a piece of work uh, whose uh, appreciation is the most important to you your own your wife your family friends critic community the price it fetches in first place if an artist is honest he try to find his own satisfaction and he thinks a work can complete once he totally satisfy him if he does not he will continue it doing again and again i would not say that artists are above material desires and comforts they are yet a good artist does not think about the material rewards when creating he may think of it once it has been created he would not give it away just free and if he is demanding a high price i do not blame it prices are decided by demand not by artistic whim you may ask for a million yet it is not that you will get a million i do not know of any good artist who when creating thought of money first or of critics opinion first all these things are secondary like the artist is not above from material gains he is not above from criticisms reaction he like to be praised he like to be famous yet it is the other way around 
he first creates for the very satisfaction of his own. Everything is a letter. You know, like you had spent uh, much of your life uh, hoping that one day you would recover your sense of hearing. Uh, if you were granted three wishes now, what would you ask for? My first wish will be to die even a greater artist than I am. Hmm? The second is that I must go before my wife go. And third is, of course, that I want good for my children. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great pleasure.